Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy, happy Sabbath, everyone. How are you today? Good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day, because I know some of our mothers may be listening or watching or watching later. So good morning and happy Sabbath to our mothers who are tuning in as well. Uh, it's a beautiful, wonderful weekend. It's a beautiful, wonderful day. It's a time that we absolutely must give a little attention, special attention, and thank you and everything that our mothers absolutely, absolutely deserve. I like to say thank you for those who are not only tuning in, but the ones who are uh, been uh, participating during the week, sending in questions, uh, asking about different things. So we're going to try to cover those things as you continue to email me different topics, uh, as we talk about different things, and uh, even as we do our Thursday uh, tutoring sessions, uh, I still want you to please uh, make sure you make it here on Sabbath morning, okay? So again, welcome and good morning and happy Sabbath. I'm going to share uh, part of my screen with you a little bit here. I've got to get it right. I've been fine tuning and a couple things have been going a little haywire and crazy. And so uh, if for whatever reason, if we lose connection or if the, if you drop off, please just log right back in. We'll be here. Okay. So if anything happens or anything goes out, just log right back in and we will be here. Um, I've been having a great week. I hope you have as well. It's been wonderful. Uh, I've been spending time with my wife and her mother. And uh, even last night, they were, we were singing together. So it was a wonderful time. So hopefully you're doing the same things with your family, okay? All right, look, as we always do, let's get started and let's get a good prayer in, okay? I am recording, by the way, just to let you know today uh, because it's a good day and it's a special day. So hopefully uh, you'll enjoy what we got planned for you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you again, O oh Father, for all that you've done for this week, keeping us, Father, and taking care of us and bringing us through. Now, Father, as we enter into Mother's Day weekend, Father, we say thank you for our mothers and thank you for all that they've done for us. The mothers that have gone on, Father, we still say thank you for all that they have done to prepare us for where we are today. Father, we say thank you for your loving, kind, and your grace and help us to open up our hearts and minds to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So look, here we go. Let's get started. I, if you can still see me out there, I'm, I'm back at it. I got my Oakwood hat on because school is about to be out. And for some people, you're going to transition and go on to college. And hopefully, just maybe, Oakwood may be one of your choices. I'm just throwing it out there. Love the school. And uh, so whatever you do, just try to pick your good Christian education to move forward on with your learning. All right. Here we go. As we always say, I hope you got the app by now and you're reading the lessons ahead. So when we get to this point... There's no need to cover this because you've already read your lesson for the week, right? Hopefully you've already downloaded uh, EGW app so that you can go and look at some of the other books that we also use. We use Spirit of Prophecy, uh, Mind, Character, and Personality, Steps to Christ, Patriots and Prophets, all those things, a lot of those things are covered in our lessons, Desire Ages, which is part of what we're doing today, uh, all covered on that one app. So if you got the app, you got the book, right? Also, keep, like I say, uh, keep want you to keep learning the books of the Bible as we go through. Uh, we're not going to cover Black History Month today. We may run out of time, so maybe next week. So we're going to change our format as we get more into the month of May a little bit, okay? So what we're going to do today, because I've been sharing with you all as I've been going along and reading each and every lesson, all right? I've been reading each and every lesson. So I've been highlighting my Bible as I show you my first screen, the key text, and some of the other writings, right? I want you today, who is there anyone prepared to show their Bible today? Anyone? 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 Hmm. Nobody's jumping in there saying, my Bible's all highlighted, and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to show you, Brother B. Anybody? All right, maybe next week. Look, I want you to highlight your Bibles. I want you to study. I want you to get into the Word. So you get into the Word, the Word gets into you, right? So I want you to really, really start highlighting your Bible. So next week, I'm going to call you out by name, and I want you to be able to show me your Bible and what it looks like, all right? And I do see who's on, and I do see who's listening, so I know you hear me. 
All right, so next week, be ready to show your Bibles and what they look like, okay? All right, as we get into the lesson a little bit, uh, we're going to get down deep into it. So let's recap a little bit. This week has been really good. Uh, this past month has been really good. So let's continue with it, right? We're talking about life and ministry of Jesus, of course. And as you see by the screen, we talked about the baptism. We talked about the temptation. We talked the miracle, cleansing in the temple, the Samaritan woman at the well, right? The child healed from Cana, the blind man that was healed. Uh-oh, where are we at now? We're at this week's lesson, the fisherman chosen. Okay, so we're going along. We're following the book, and we're almost there, right? We're almost there. So we've been following these lessons just as you see it on the screen. It's been really good. All right, as we talked about when we first started this year, we talked about the living message, right? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, right? And then we talked about always running away from God. I, I like to bring this slide up every week only because every single week it seems like I talk to someone or I talk to different people and they're having issues in their life. And the ones that are having issues in their life are the ones who are not running to God. They keep running from God. So once we start running to God is when we stop having some of the issues that we're having in life and God starts to solve some of our problems. So remember, always run to God because he's in pursuit of us. We should be in pursuit of him, right? All right. The Father's God chose for his son. Great lesson. Countdown to the Savior. Again, another great lesson that we were doing. What you seek is what you get. We covered a lot of that last week because it came full circle of all these different lessons were popping up in last week's lesson, right? Following the yonder star, and we're talking about Jesus growing up and maturing and being in the temple where he's supposed to be, just like we're supposed to be. Then we talked about it is written. And this is how we fight the temptations of life and fight the devil, especially when it comes to our friends in the hood. Because I had a lot of friends in my neighborhood who like to smoke, drink, fight, shoot. But thank goodness for my mother who kept me out of all of those situations. And she did that by putting me in a Christian education and by just making me do the right things. So I'm very thankful for my mother who kept me away from a lot of stuff, basically because of what is written, okay? Again, we talked about the temptation of Jesus. We talked about celebrating with Jesus at the wedding feast, right? We talked about Philip and Nick Daniel when they, they said, come and see. I think we found him. I really think we found him, right? <laughs> we talked more about the temptation of Jesus, and we also talk about this slide every week. Right? Because there's all these temptations out there. But remember, at the wedding feast, Jesus didn't turn the water into liquor. He turned it into fresh grapefruit juice, not liquor. I know the Bible says wine, but that was grape juice back then. That was wine. But it was the fresh, not the fermented. Right? All right. We talked about Jesus' all-star team, his all-star lineup. And we're going to talk about a couple of them today. We're going to talk about Simon Peter, especially. Right? right, we're going to talk about him today. Show reference in my house, right? This was where Jesus was upset when he came to the temple and everybody's selling stuff and outside making money instead of being inside worshiping, right? And we talked about being born again. This is where Nicodemus was trying to figure out what God, what Jesus was actually trying to say and what he meant by being born again, right? So we had some great, great lessons. Then we talked about come and see. And this was that, again, we're talking about come and see again. Have you noticed the theme, what we keep doing? The theme is almost the same. When somebody finds Jesus, what do we do? We're like, look, look, who I, I found something. I found him. Look, come, come see, come see, come see. I'm serious. I think I found it. I found what we've been looking for. So he met the woman at the well. Remember the woman at the well? When she realized who he was, she dropped all her stuff. She dropped her pots and took off running because she had found him. And then what did she do? She ran back to town to tell everybody, and when she did, they came and they were also not only just healed, but they were saved, and they found out that they had found Jesus as well. All right? So I think that was one of the best, best lessons in the middle of all these lessons so far of where once we, how we can witness for Jesus. Once we find Jesus, we can witness for him. Then we talked about the nobleman's son, right? And how he had a sick son, uh, he was son was sick, and his son was healed the hour he first believed. And I think that's kind of the, 
the meaning of most of these stories as we go through them of how Jesus heals or Jesus comes through the hour that we, that we first believe. So we have to not only read, but we have to believe. I know many of you have been baptized and now that many of you have been baptized, do you still believe the same that you did when you were baptized? You have to think to really think hard about that. That moment that you first believed, is your faith just as strong then? Or is it just as strong now as it was then? All right, moving along. Because we got a lot to talk about today. We got a lot to talk about. Remember we talked about different things that come from the Bible and people take them and make money from, right? We talked about Marvel Comics, The Walking Dead, uh, to be absent from the body. It doesn't necessarily say it's present with the Lord. It says, I'd rather be, but I know people take that and twist it, right? All the time, all the time. And then uh, I'm going to skip that slide. I'm going to go, we're going to get some other ones. Another one that said, be fruitful and multiply. And the Bible does say be fruitful and multiply, but it wants you to do that after you're married. So before you're married, what does it say? Flee fornication. But once you're married, right? Once you're married, absolutely be fruitful and multiply. Take care of your family. Be a good mother, a good father to your children, right? And don't end up on one of these shows that, that show us how life is not supposed to be. But we keep watching these different programs and thinking that that's how it's supposed to be. And it's not. God wants us to be happy. God wants us to have a great relationship with a good mother and a good father. And if we just follow that, we don't have to worry about all this other stuff, right? So we talked about Adam and Eve in the garden and the plan that God had for them, right? And we also talked about, do you want to get well? And this was a man that was at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years, an invalid, crippled man. He can get up the steps to get to the world to get healed. But again, with that same story, what was the basic, basic meaning of that story? Again, what was it? He was healed, right? When? The hour he first believed. So Jesus asked him, look, do you want to get well? And when he asked him, the man, yeah, I want to get well. And that's when he told him, what? Pick up your bed and walk, right? So when he did that, he believed. And then after he believed, remember, he was outside with the money changers, right? He was outside with all the people doing all these different things. But later on, after he got healed, where was he? He was found in the temple. So we have to understand that. I think Jesus wants us to be in the temple where we should be worshiping and learning more about him, right? Right? So let's move on. We're going to jump down the list lesson here. And this is appearance versus reality. And this was a great lesson, Right? It's a great lesson. I think we talked about some good stuff on that lesson. I think one of the biggest things uh, we talked about with that lesson is uh, what things that people make up that isn't necessarily in the Bible, right? And so we, we learned a lot about that. As you see on the screen, we learned a lot about that lesson, about things that people make up versus what's actually in the Bible. So if you have a question about something, go to your Bible and look it up. It's there. I guarantee you it's there, right? Then we moved on from there, right? And we had a great lesson. And then we talked about some of the sayings from the Bible. This actually came on, if you listen to Amazing Facts Radio, Scapegoat came on last night, and they were talking about the scapegoat. <laughs> it was so funny, so funny. But these are the things that actually come from the Bible itself, right? And people take it and twist it and make money off of different things, right? But we have to know where this stuff comes from and what it means to us, right? So we talked about that, apple of my eye. And I think one of the biggest things that we learned about apple of my eye is that even though we see beautiful things, we see wonderful things, we see nice cars, we see nice houses, we see money, we see a nice young man or a nice young woman, depending on if you're looking for a man, you're looking for a woman, right? That is young men looking for a woman and young ladies looking for a man. Let's make sure that's clear. But what do we find out? The heart is deceitful above all things. We can't just follow our hearts. And some of the songs that we hear during Valentine's Day and some of the things that we hear on the radio, just follow your heart. No, 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 no. We follow God and ask God to lead us in the right way. Because why? The heart is deceitful above all things. Got to be careful. And we talked about a man after my own heart, right? We're going to get more into that when it comes to, down to uh, Memorial Day and also Veterans Day. Talked about putting words in my mouth, being a man, right? Be, be a man. 
it doesn't necessarily mean how we you always use it. And then we talked about winning by the skin of your teeth. All these things come from the Bible. And we talked about a wit, our wit's end, and there's nothing new under the sun. I know my mama tells me that still to this day. To this day, to this day, she still tells me that there's nothing new under the sun. And that's when we talked about the hieroglyphics and the pictures. And I know, guess what? On your phone, on your smartphones, you use characters. When you go to IG and Snap and all the other different apps, you, be, you, you use characters all the time. But think about it. Thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, they, the Egyptians used the same thing. They used characters to talk. Right? Nothing new on this side. And we talked about a little birdie told me and about being able to see eye to eye. Because a lot of times we don't see eye to eye with our parents. Right? But we can, if we just listen and be humble and do what God wants us to do, we can see out of eye with our parents. When we don't see out of our parents, we're being what? Rebellious. And that's part of what, what the devil wants us to do. He wants us to be rebellious, right? But let's try to make sure we see eye out of eye with our parents. All right. Rise and shine. Coming from the Bible. All by the wayside. We talked about our grades slipping. Not one of our grades slipping, right? Uh, straight from the Bible. Then we talked about the blind leading the blind, and then talked about many are called but chosen a few. I think the Marines like that they took that from the Bible and made it their own and twisted around. But a lot of people don't know that that comes straight from the Bible. Then it talks about the truth will set you free, right? Or the truth will make you free. And it doesn't mean it's gonna get you're gonna get out of jail, but it will set your soul free if you just tell the truth. Absolutely. Now, we got down to last week, and we were talking about a tumultuous homecoming, right? And this is when Jesus was coming back home, and he was speaking in the temple. He was speaking good till he started talking about the people. Because he had to let them know, look, you all are nice, and you're doing great things, but you're treating the other people wrong. And he didn't like it, right? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has known me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recover the sight for the blind, to set the press free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And a lot of people he was talking to were in the temple. They were people, rich people in the temple, running the temple, right? But they didn't want to hear about the poor and the blind and all the things that we we're supposed to be doing and the people we we're supposed to be helping as Christians, right? They want to do it their own way. So we got through that lesson. It was very, very good. And then we're going to start with today's lesson, right? And this lesson, I am a follower. And I thought about that wonderful camp meeting song, as I call it. <laughs> uh, but I heard that song, I think, when I was first in church school back in 1972. I think it was the first time I heard it. And then I heard it at, at, at Ephesus Junior Academy years later. And I love that song. But it fits so much perfectly into what we're talking about today, right? So let's start our lesson. And here we go. We're going to start this lesson. It's going to be a good lesson. And I think you're going to really learn something from it and, and make you check yourself and see if you really are a follower of Jesus, right? So let's get started. Key text. It says, Simon Peter fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. And Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, lifted everything and followed him. Right? So if you've read the lesson, you know what that means by now. And so let me ask you this. We've seen throughout, throughout every single lesson, every single lesson, right? Every single lesson, the people think a certain way. They believe a certain way, right? But when they really meet Jesus and they really understand what, who Jesus really is and what he wants them to do. So have you gotten to the point where you say, I really want to just follow what Jesus wants me to do? Right? We have to get to that point. And then the flashlight says, they were humble and unlearned men, those fishers of Galilee, but Christ, the light of the world, was abundantly able to qualify them. Let's go back. Read that one more time. They were humble and unlearned men, those fishers of Galilee, but Christ, the light of the world, was abundantly able to qualify them for the position. So look, well, remember we talked about Jesus uh, when we were back up there with Nathaniel and Philip. When he was picking his all-star team, remember? He found everyday, ordinary individuals. He didn't find the rich people. He wasn't looking for the smartest people. He was looking for everyday individuals to follow him and learn from him and also spread the gospel. And this is the message that comes across that you have to get. Remember I always say you don't have to be the deacon. 
You don't have to be the head elder. You don't have to be the pastor, but God has worked for you. So when Jesus was picking all these people, his, his disciples, his all-star team, he was looking for everyday ordinary men. And what does it say there? They were humble and unlearned men, those fishers of Galilee. But Christ the light of the world was abundantly able to qualify them for the position which he had chosen them. He passed by the wise men of his time because they were so self-confident and they could not sympathize with suffering humanity and become co-laborers with the man of Nazareth. In other words, they had too much pride. So he didn't cho chose them. The Lord Jesus seeks the cooperation of those who will become unobstructed channels for the communication of his grace. The first thing to be learned by all who would become workers together with God is the lesson of self-distrust. We have to stop following what we want to do. We have to start following what God wants us to do. That's why we have to make sure we listen for God's voice. So when we pray or when we just wake up in the morning and ask God, God, what do you want me to do today? You have to listen for that voice. You have to remove yourself. And when you remove yourself, you will hear God, hear God speak to you. And it says, then, then they are prepared to have imparted to them the character of Christ. Let's go to the what do you think. If Jesus asked you to leave everything and follow him, what would your response be? Would it be what it, <laughs> hold on, what, wait a minute. What do you mean by everything, Lord? Or would you say, I'll leave some things and can I still follow you? Or would you say, you don't really mean that, do you? Do you really mean that? You mean, do I have to leave my games behind? Do I have to leave all my video games behind? Do I have to leave all my friends behind? God is asking you to follow him, but are we absolutely prepared to do that? to leave everything behind and follow him. We have to understand what that means. Did you know? It says the Sea of Galilee has been a famous spot for fishermen since ancient times. Fishing methods used in Jesus' time probably included fishermen catching fish with their bare hands. So look, when was the last time you went to the river or to the lake and was jumping in the water trying to catch the fish with your bare hands? Who did that? Raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. Did you catch one? Uh, it says, their bare hands or wicker baskets. Who's ever tried to catch a fish with a wicker basket? Now, so I know some of my island folks. I guarantee you, I know one in particular who's not on here today. I know he's done that. <laughs> and it says trapping fish, fishing with the hook and the line. That's me. That would be me. Or spearing fish with arrows or harpoons. I haven't done that yet, but I'm going to do it soon. But fishing with nets was by far the most popular way to fish. So Peter, Andrew, James and John were probably fishing with circular cast nets. So look, what do they do today? They use circular cast nets. The boat goes out, it goes in a circle, it drops the net and they pull in a lot of fish. And I think they really learned this from the Bible. I really do. It says, which were waiting to allow the circle to inset the, the net to encircle the fish. And that's how they catch a lot of tuna or salmon that they catch today. They drop it in the water, they go in a circle, and they pull the fish in. And what happens? Look at the Bible. They did this way back in Jesus' time. The same thing. This required great skill and also great dedication on the part of the fishermen. It says Jesus called Peter and his companions away from fishing to a task that would also require skill and total dedication, fishing for human beings to bring into the kingdom. And, you know, we always sing that song, Fishers of Ben. But do we understand what that really, really means? Are we fishers of men? Are we spreading the gospel that Jesus wants us to spread? Are we putting out our nets to catch fish for Jesus? That's what the story is all about. Each and every day, there's something that we should be doing. So let's get into the story a little bit. Because I like this story a lot. Because it tells a lot about how we understand and what we truly believe. Do you really, really, truly, truly believe? And are you willing, are you willing to fish for Jesus? It says, one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. Now look, think about this. They had just pulled the boats in. They didn't catch anything all night. They're experienced fishermen. They know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. And this guy, some guy in a robe just walks up, 
He doesn't look like a fisherman. He doesn't look like he knows what he's doing. But he comes to us, us, you telling me, I fish all the time. Who do you think you are? You telling me? So he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put out a little more for sure. Then he sat down and talked to people from the boat. So look, Jesus gets in the boat. He tells him, look, go back out. But as they're looking at him, he's still teaching to the people on the shore. They're watching him. So when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Jesus gets on the boat. He's still teaching to the people on the shore. So Simon's looking at him like, look, who are you? And he said, Master, uh, we work hard all night and haven't caught anything. You know why? Because I know what I'm doing. You don't have to tell me what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I fish all the time. Does that sound like us when we always say, I know, or I know what I'm doing, or I'm good? That sounds like us. So when Jesus is telling us things, we have to be able to listen and be humble and listen. And then it says, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, because you say so, I'll let down the nets. So when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets, that their nets, couldn't handle it. So they caught so much fish when they went back out. They couldn't believe it. They could not believe it. And I'm telling you, this is the part where you have to listen to what Jesus is telling you to do. So when they went back out with their nets, they caught so much that their nets were bursting. Their nets were tearing. And this is the part where when they came back in and they really truly believed and they said, this must be the one that was to come. And this is the point when they first believed and when they really truly believed and when they first truly believed, they let everything go. Remember, they fished all their life. They were professional fishermen. That's what they did. This is what we do. So the things that we do each and every day, are we willing to let that go and follow Jesus? Are we really, really ready? I think sometimes this, this is something that it comes across. It says, remember sometimes Jesus answering your prayer is not Jesus answering your prayer. And I think a lot of times we want different things and we want this and we want that. We want cars, we want houses, we want money, we want different things. And a lot of times, even the adults, Jesus blesses you or Jesus answers your prayer by not answering that prayer. Because Jesus knows if he answers that prayer, it will take you away from the things that Jesus wants you to do. So think about that sometimes when your prayers don't come through, when you don't get the things you want. Jesus knows that if you get that thing, it's going to take you away. So what did the fishermen do? What did the fishermen do? They dropped all their possessions that they had and they followed him. So I say this lesson is so deep. We have to understand that. Let's go to the punchlines. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. The next one says that Jesus went on from there. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the test collector's booth. Follow me, he told me. And Matthew got up and followed him. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves. And remember, this is what we just read a second ago. You have to deny yourself. You have to deny yourself of the things that you want. You have to deny yourself of the things that you are trying to do and put Jesus first. And he said, you must deny yourself and take up the cross and follow me. And that's what says Jesus answered. If you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Like I say, this lesson has been a beautiful one of how to remove self of other things we do. And I know personally, I wanted to do so many different things. I had so many different things I wanted to do and so many things I wanted to get and so many things I wanted to buy. And I believe that God tapped me on the shoulder and said, no, this is what I need you to do. And whether you want to listen or not, sometimes God will make you listen. He will absolutely make you listen. For the inside, he says, he who loves Christ the most will do the greatest amount of good. 
Then it says obedience to service and allegiance of love. We're going to learn about allegiance here soon because we always pledge allegiance to the flag, but do we pledge our allegiance to God first? It says obedience to service and allegiance to love is the true sign of discipleship. And the last one says there's no limit to the usefulness of one who, by putting self aside, makes room for the working of the Holy Spirit upon his heart and lives a holy, <laughs> a life wholly consecrated to God. Are we really ready to do that? So look, this lesson has been so, so important, along with all the other lessons compounding and building and totally, re not only rebuilding with the way that we're thinking, but rebuilding what we feel in our hearts that we should be doing for God. We have to learn to put self aside and follow God's voice each and every day. And that's something I think we absolutely have, must pray for. Well, that comes to the close, <laughs> the ending and the conclusion of our lesson today. Remember, on your apps or in your books, please make sure that you're reading The Connection to Life. This is a daily lesson study that you can do. It starts every week after each lesson, and there's a daily lesson there for you to read over. This could be part of your daily lesson study. It only takes about two minutes to read each and every day. Make that part of your daily life. So next week, we're going to read about Restored at the Church, right? It's going to be a great lesson. And I think all these lessons have been really good to not only inspire us, but to get us closer to God. Remember, the things that we want in life, you'll get them. You will get them, but you got to follow God first in order to achieve and attain the things we want. We just got to work hard, but most of all, we got to study hard. And when we study hard and we study our Bibles just as hard as our lesson, God will reward you. He will bless you with those things that you want. But you got to put him first in everything we do. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again, O oh Lord, for not only your word that you give to us, but most of all, God, the promises, the, the lessons, the parables, the stories that you've provided for us to show us that you must be first in everything we do. And once we put you first, God, you, you will come through. You will answer our prayers. You will be there for us to take care of us and our families. As you've taken care of us thus far, we say again, thank you for our mothers. We say thank you for our families. We say thank you for those who have been a mother to us. But most of all, God, we say thank you for your word that is sure and true. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Well, listen, that's all we got for this week. So next week, we'll see you with this lesson. And uh, I'm glad you could spend time with us today. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. So listen, have a great and wonderful, blessed, happy Sabbath. Take care, everyone.